So today what we're adding on is how to tell <clears throat> the number of positive roots, the number of negative roots, and the number of imaginary roots by only looking at the equation. So this would be another thing that would be like pre-graphing calculator. And maybe if you go to college, you might have a professor that says you cannot use a calculator. You have to do it this way. So we would need to understand that. So um, first we're going to find the possible positive roots. We're going to find the maximum of possible positive roots. The positive root would be like when you graphed it. Oops, I pushed something. I didn't mean to push, sorry. When you when you graph it, you got all your x-intercepts. That would be like how many of them are positive. That's literally what we're asking here. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at sign changes between the coefficients if this is in the correct order where we're looking at the um, descending powers of the x's. We're going to look at sign changes. So this is a 1, and we go to negative 2. That's the sign change. We go from negative 2 to positive 3. That's the sign change. We go to positive 3 to negative 10. That's the sign change. Then we go to negative. Then we go to negative, and negative, those are no sign changes. They're all negative from there. So we have three possible positives. That's a max of three possible positive Roots. Roots are also known as x-intercepts, also known as the zero site, the same thing. <laughs> now, when I say max, there could be less. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, do the positive, possible <coughs> negative roots. And to find the possible negative roots, you have to replace x with negative x. So we take the equation, we replace all our x's with negative x, and then we're going to simplify those. So negative x to the sixth power. Negative x to an even power is still positive. So this is still going to be positive x to 6, or 1 is positive. Then this um, negative x to the fifth becomes negative. And then we multiply that with this negative 2. So we have positive 2x to the fifth. So there's a, um, that changes the original. Here, that is uh, positive, so it stays positive. 3x to the fourth. Here we've got a negative, so we're going to multiply that negative with the already negative 10 plus 10x to the third. Negative x squared is positive, so multiply that with negative 6x squared. Here these are both negative, so plus 8x and then minus 8. And we look for sign changes. Positive, 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 positive. Oh, here's my first sign change. And we have another sign change. And then we have another sign change. So we have a max of three negative. So that's a maximum. There could be less. What it does not tell you is how many imaginary roots there are. But what we do know is that the total number should always be 6, or, or the degree. No, this one is 6. Um, I don't have enough space on here. You guys do. I'm just going to make some space real fast, because I'm going to put the number 6 off to the side here. So I like to add this extra column on. I just like to add that on. I think it's helpful. <clears throat> So you're going to make um, a chart to show every possibility. We had how many maximum positive? Three. Three. We had how many maximum negative? Three. If I add those together, I get a total of six, and that's my degree. That's the highest I can go. So it tells me how many imaginary would be. There would be zero if that's the case. But it's not always the maximum. It could be less. Um, but they go down by twos. So uh, another scenario I could have would be that I still have three positives, but now I have one negative. So they go down by twos. And if I add those together, how many do I need to add? I need to add two more negatives, <clears throat> not negatives, imaginary, but I have a total of six. Before I finish the chart, remember imaginary numbers are the square root of negative one 
which looks like I. Sure. Um, and then the way that we get the imaginary numbers is maybe we do complete the square, or maybe we do quadratic formula. And remember, when we do quadratic formula, we say x equals opposite b. So x equals opposite b plus or minus. The only way I'd ever get the square root in my answer is if I had plus or minus square root of something. So imaginaries never will ever ever be one or three. They will always be even amounts. Always even. <coughs> oh, because they're always plus or minus. Kind of conjugate. All right, my next scenario could be that I have one positive. How many negatives could I have? Three. Three. Which would leave me with two imaginaries. Give me six. There is one more scenario. If I had one positive and one negative and four imaginaries. Okay, so this is what we're adding on to the stuff we've been learning is now you're going to make a chart of all the possible positives, negatives, imaginary. So use Descartes' rule of signs to find the possible positives, negatives, imaginary, and zeros. Then we're going to find all the zeros. This is sort of what your assignment is going to look like. So we're going to start by looking for sign changes for our possible positives. Am I missing some terms? Okay, even if I put those terms in, how many sign changes do I get? One, one. So we have a max of one positive. So we'll do negative, we're going to do G of negative X. Wherever we see an X, change it to negative X. In parentheses. So that gives me negative x cubed minus 1. How many sign changes? So there's no negatives. Why do you think there's 5 imaginary? What's the degree? What's our degree? Our degree is 3. So there's a total of three answers. So we make a chart. We'll have positives. We'll have negatives. We'll have imaginary. And that's going to equal our degree. And I know that I have a maximum of one positive. I have a maximum of zero negatives which means I have to have two imaginary to equal our degree of three. Is there another scenario? Yeah. No. So the positives would have to go by, down by twos to be another scenario, but if I can't, because there's only one. The negatives are already zero. They can't go down anymore. And the imaginaries would have to be even. There's no other scenario. This is the scenario. This is it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find the zeros. Okay, how can I look at that equation and find zeros? If you think you found one, factor it out. I'm going to uh, type it in.
So your graph should look like that. <laughs> um, and it looks like the number one. Is that a positive zero? Just making sure. We should have one positive one, and that's what it looks like. So go ahead and take out that one. Take out the one. Um, and then what numbers do I use here? I use one, one zero, 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 negative. And that comes out, so I know it really is a zero. We have left over x squared plus x plus one equals zero. <laughs> um, how are we going to get the other two answers? I know that they should be imaginary. That means it's not going to factor. Before you do that, um, if the middle number is even, I bet you anything completing the square is easier than when I did my homework, that a lot of you didn't do, um, I used to complete the square twice, and it was easier than doing quadratic work. Just saying. But since the middle is odd, I'm not going to do complete the square for this one. So we'll do a quadratic formula. It is x equals. Um, some of you forget the x equals part. And then you get confused when you go to write the factors. x equals opposite b plus or minus square root g squared. Minus 4 times 8 times B, all over 2 times A. You get negative 1 plus or minus square root negative 3 over 2. So I do have the square root of a negative number. I am going to simplify that. Square root of negative 3 is the same thing as square root of negative 1 multiplied by square root of positive 3. And what is square root of negative 1? I. And then all I'm asking you to do for this assignment is write the zeros. So when we write zeros, we list them with x equals. We did other things on the other assignment, but I'm not going to make you do that every single night. On the test, you'll do everything. No, nothing. <laughs> yeah, it will be. Okay. All right, one more example. So we're going to first do the positives and negatives. Do you take a moment? Do the positives and negatives. Do possible max positives, possible max negatives. Very good. There's no sense for a positive. Have you done it? Or you just get them. Zero positive. <laughs> So if I um, take negative x to the fourth power, that's positive x to the fourth. Plus, this is 6x squared plus 5. <coughs> so we have 0 negative. So my chart would be very easy. It would be positive 0, negative 0, imaginary 4, degree is 4. Um, and there's no other scenario because you can't go down from the positive or negatives and you don't do that with the imaginary. So now what we have to do is we have to find all the zeros. You already know there are going to be four imaginary zeros. Where should we start? Graph them? No. Because they don't look there. So what's it look like if there's imaginary zero? What does it look like? It doesn't look. It doesn't intersect what? Yeah. I'm just going to graph it. X to the 4. 
That's on the y-axis. That's on the y-axis. There is a y-intercept. Mm -hmm. So you can see the graph goes up. Now, I mean, it could, like, come back down outside of my window, except the fact that we know that they're all imaginary numbers. So I have to waste my time, like, zooming out to see if it ever comes back down. They're all imaginary. So what that means about the graph is they will never cross the x-axis, but we still have to find those zeros. We have to find what makes this equation equal to zero. So there's got to be another way of finding it since we can't look on the graph. I guess since that you will need to squared. Zero, oops, that's <laughs> Zero equals x to the fourth plus, what's the six x squared? Mm -hmm. That's why we wrote it. Okay. Uh, there's got to be a re way I can solve for x. What are my methods for solving for x? Quadratic formula? It's not really quadratic, but it kind of is. There's another way. You could complete the square, but it wouldn't be with squares so much, but kind of. If you have to adapt it. Yeah. Um, there is another method that works also. What you multiply together you give you x of four. And they're both positive, so we've got plus and plus. What do you multiply together? Maybe five. Out of one. Yeah. Um, now, if you did quadratic formulas, you didn't realize that was factorable. When you did quadratic formula, you couldn't say x equals. You have to say x squared equals opposite 6 plus or minus and so on from there. So you just have to say x squared equals and so on if you did quadratic formulas. But this one is factorable. Um, it factors to this. But these are not linear factors. So what we have to do is we have to solve each of these. For zero. So I will be square rooting, which means plus or minus, and I have a negative number under the square root. So that becomes the imaginary part. So if x equals plus or minus i square root 5. And then for this one, move the 1 over square root it, plus or minus, and then square root of 1, or negative 1 is i. So we have plus or minus i. So our zeros would be x equals plus or minus i and plus or minus i over minus. So if there are any that have no positives, no negatives, you're not going to be able to like pick any of them out to factor out, because then it's probably factorable. So I'm not going to give you one that you can't do. Okay? So, but if you have questions, come see me, because we're going to have x8. Oh, you won't have x8. I did lie to you. You do. The workers we don't have it. Oh, I was about to say. Like, you won't have XH. You won't have the study hall before. You will have it. You won't have it before you see me. I was about to scream. No, wait, I can't get out the note. Sorry. I'm not paying attention to this. I'll do these instead. Yeah. Oh, these look hard. These are copies of it. Oh. Okay. So it has a Great. And you're still recording this, Chris. There. You're so specially good. <laughs>